Welcome back and thank you very much. This is TV3 New Day. The Today newspaper says GN Bank, what led to its reclassification as a savings and loans company? A bigger question I will ask is why are the GN Bank access, uh, assets rotten away in the bushes? They had branches everywhere in this country and you, you need to see some of them in the bush. We acquired them and now they are rotting away employment that they used to provide. I don't know what's happening to that. But Kofi Asamoasia writes, in Doom versus Bank of Ghana, the Court of Appeal was wrong. Ghana IMF engagement. Mahama advises government on what to do. Well, the Daily Guide this morning says, Motorway Runabout Project 2 starts in September. My godfather wanted to sleep with me. Who is that? Feli Nuna. Um, KGL hosts Nigeria Lottery Regulator. And over 100 countries run to IMF. BNFT, <clears throat> the return to IMF, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, the WTO is back. Are you prepared to charge, uh, change or reacting to it? 25% of SNIT contributors earn up to 500 Ghana cities. Government to down, uh, draw down 10 billion Ghana cities from Bank of Ghana in quarter one. The Ghanaian Times. President ends role as ECOWAS chair, hands over to President of Guinea-Bissau. I'm sure he addressed them there. Our president has not addressed us in the midst of all the crisis. Ghana Armed Forces warns public against still use of military pattern uniforms, accoutrements without permit. And I remember as a cadet that the Rawlings regime had something like that. I don't know why we allowed for it to uh, go down the lane again. World Bank lords Ghana for Gamma projects. Ghanaian Times has reviewed their prizes. They say, well, sat three cities, a juman or munye bium nice four cities. And uh, they, they are selling it now for four cities. The Daily Graphic, ECOWAS chair, President Ernst Chenna, Guinea-Bissau takes over. IMF intervention, government update about economic stability, Kojo Ponkruma. Ghana needs righteousness, not churches, leaders. Apostle Eric Nyamicha is the boss at the Church of Pentecost. That's what he says. And the Finder newspaper, President Akufado and his wife bid farewell to former first lady of Ghana. Also, NLA launches Sunday as draw. End of 2019 economy, not IMF uh, bound. COVID-19, Russia, Ukraine war triggered crisis. E-Levy is not charged on merchant accounts according to the Ghana Revenue Authority. I want to say thank you to Grant Park Clothing. I done so much for my outfit this morning. 020-985-5696. Those are the numbers to call. 020-985-5696. And you get something special for you and yours. Mr. Peter Austin Hall of Pandu Municipal Immigration Commander. It's your birthday today. Happy birthday. Also, a happy birthday to um, Efia Kunedu Anafo. This is from... Efo Kwame Jakbasu uh, says today is your birthday. He loves you to the moon and back. Happy birthday to um, this from Oxo Setonam, Seiram, and Selikem. Uh, your children, they send their regards and, and their love to you, mommy. Happy birthday to Mrs. Henrietta Jekum uh, of the 37 Military Hospital. This is from your husband, Apostle Prince Jekum of House of Penal Ministry International. And happy birthday also to Mrs. Ya Dodu, a staff of the University of Health and Allied Sciences, you has in whole. And the twin brother, Yao Newman, staff of Wisconsin University and Agbogba. A happy birthday also to Kevin Boating from your aunt, Mrs. Stella Okutu. And another one to Mr. Solomon Tete Okutu. Uh, this is from your wife, Mrs. Uh, Stella Okutu. Happy, happy birthday to you. And if it's your birthday as well, happy birthday to you. My guest this morning is lawyer Godwin Eduji Kujo Tamaklu. He is a member of the NDC's legal team, also a member of the national communications team. And uh, we will be joined shortly by Mr. Yawa Samwa, as I understand, uh, on the ticket of the NPP. Council, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, Johnny, and uh, good morning to your cherished uh, viewers, and good morning to uh, my learned senior who is late mm. because of IMF engagement. Oh, no, no, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. Yes, yes, yes. He's, he's, in, yeah, he, he's in the studio. He, he went for the IMF negotiation, the advanced team, mm. so he is quite late. I can understand. Ah, he, he went for... Uh, yeah, 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 advanced team. Oh, how? But he said the team is coming. Okay, okay, so I'm waiting for him. <laughs> Take a listen to this conversation <laughs> with um, the uh, Honourable Minister for Information, Kojo Pong Krumas. We do know that officials of the International Monetary Fund will arrive in the country uh, Wednesday following the directive by the President of the Republic, Nana Adotankwe Kufado. Take a listen. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister. So uh, you issued that statement on Friday. It was signed by you. 
um, it must have been difficult for you to release that statement. No, it's um, a normal um, part of my job to articulate to the Republic the decisions of the government and sometimes the president. And it is in that line that we put that out. Following from that statement, I'm sure you've monitored social media reactions coming in from uh, a section of Ghanaians, including your political opponent. Um, you must be embarrassed by this decision. The reasons that have brought us here are quite clear. If you look at uh, the performance of Ghana's economy between 2017 and 2019, um, yes, there were still some structural challenges in Ghana's economy, but the economy was performing way better based on the, in particular, the fiscal and monetary policy measures and the broader economic policy measures that the administration was rolling out. And so the results were that we were growing better, inflation was going down, interest rates were going down, um, we're having the opportunity to create some more jobs and some more development programs in the economy. In 2020, that stopped. That stopped primarily because our economy, still with its challenges, was hit by a major external factor, not just our economy, many economies around the world. In 2021, we started a path to recovery. So you notice that in 2021, even though we had depleted a good chunk of our buffers and our reserves, we were still now building back better, uh, trying to rebuild our reserves and trying to get the economy back on track. And then the first part of 2022, I think in February, um, you had what occurred in the Black Sea area, giving the world another major crisis. Now uh, there's a high food price all over the world, high fuel prices, high cost of financing, and it is biting the Ghanaian a lot. Do you have the domestic buffers still to respond to them? You don't. You are now just trying to recover and rebuild. And so if you look at all your options, despite the initial thinking that you could rebuild those buffers domestically, the president has decided that it's important we start engaging with the fund with the possibility of getting a balance of payments support from them to help us rebuild our buffers and better mitigate what's happening around the world and happening here in Ghana as well. Ordinarily, this should have been a normal thing because we are members of the International Monetary Fund. Don't you think that the only reason we've had this sort of reaction is because of what you did, what your party did uh, then in opposition and how you reacted to uh, John Mahama and his decision to go to the IMF? I believe that that is a good reason for which a lot of people are asking questions. Um, and there are answers for that. I think we have been clear that when you self-induce a crisis, and then you have to go to the fund for a balance of payment supported program, then it raises questions about the way you are managing fiscal policy, monetary policy, and the broader economy. But this is not a situation in which you have a self-induced crisis. That was the Honorable Kujopo Nkrumah with my colleague Parkway Siasari. They have been joined also in studio by lawyer Yabo Abiyan Samoa. He is the Communications Director of the New Patriotic Party. Council, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing? Thank you very much, Johnny. Good to see you. Thank you. Let's begin the conversation this way. Um, we do know what directive has been given. We're expecting the IMF um, you know, officials in country. But the first question is, are we managing this crisis communication well from government's perspective in terms of um, candor? Accepting it is one thing, but where is the apology, somebody will say? Uh, let me say a very, very, should I say happy or mm -hmm. moderately happy uh, good morning mm. to your viewers. I haven't been here for a while. That's right. Mm. That's right. And I still know that you're up to your game. So. <laughs> <laughs> and he's looking so good. Yes. And he's in opposition. Yeah. And he thinks this economy is not good for him. <laughs> Look at him. Looking so handsome and sharp on the revenues from his practice in Ghana <laughs> at this time. <laughs> so we are doing well. Yes, but um, you see, we can't be more truthful. There can't be more candor than the announcement of the decision mm. to go to the IMF. And post that announcement, mm. there is very little you can hide. Mm. Because the, the, the nature of the engagement with the IMF is very open. Right. Uh, the program 
that will be designed will be public knowledge. Mm -hmm. The assessments on which the program will be based will be public knowledge. And, and given the state of play in Ghana about uh, civil society engagement and mm -hmm. otherwise, clearly uh, there's very little you can do. Now, if it comes to engagement with our president from the NDC, mm -hmm. then you have an interesting situation. Which is? Uh, which is that uh, even right now, as the G is telling me that I have gone to the IMF negotiations <laughs> and I'm about I, I think they will have their day. But it is not about an apology. Mm. Absolutely not. There is nothing to apologize about. Really? Yes. Because much as many of us believed, several Ghanaians still believe, and some people in the MPP also believe, and there are others in the nation who believe that it is possible that we could develop a homegrown program mm. rather than go under a program in the IMF because we have an Article 4 relationship with them. Uh, it is at a time when the direct managers of the economy, mm -hmm. His Excellency the President, has decided that in the interest of the public good, it is better we go under a formal program. And I think that decision deserves our respect and support as a nation. After, after all that was said yes, I'm coming there. After in all February. that was said, uh, there are two sayings. Mm -hmm. The first set of sayings is about the NDC, mm -hmm. which they are gloating over happy. No, no focus uh, on them. Uh -huh. So the second set of sayings is our government right. itself, right. that we may not go to the IMF. We will not go, we to, will not go yes. to the IMF. Unfortunately, policy issues and the need to meet key obligations mm. have compelled us to do that. It's a balance between revenue and expenditure and the ability to service the debt overhang. Uh, when you have an import dependent economy like Ghana, you're always at risk. Clearly, the stress on the city from the need to import and the need to change dollar to import and the lack of consistent revenue based on the misalignment of revenue inflows from the budget program, whatever we had budget, if it's not flowing that well. And then you have to meet your short-term loan obligations in terms of interest mm -hmm. up front. Then, then you have a situation that you must avert. Uh, it doesn't mean that the fundamentals of the economy are poor. We are, we are one of the strongest, and you will recall, mm -hmm. even in COVID, that we remained one of the buoyant. Mm -hmm. Because we, didn't, we never slipped below negative during that time, in terms of growth. A, a, a good economy is good governance. A bad economy is bad governance. It is true. So if we yeah, are in this we, state, we, so, that so we, we, have, we have nearly over 100 countries in bad governance. And uh, my honorable information minister, has laid it out very clearly. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have a situation of governance induced by external factors beyond your control, mm -hmm. you could be the best manager. Those factors can undermine you. But and not, not, your not, best none of efforts. those hundred countries bastardized the IMF like we did. And, and that is where. We even call people who that, that, that were directly pointing us towards the IMF. That, that, that is, look, that they don't where, know what they're talking that about. That is where. Yes, we are eating our words in public. And, and I don't think there's any shame about it. It's a policy matter. Mm. Yes, I, I, uh, that's why I'm conceding that the edugies of, of Ghana will have their day. Mm. But merely saying it doesn't justify our not going. Merely uh, uh, telling it back to us mm. when indeed it is the best policy option to go to the IMF doesn't make a difference. What, what, because if we go mm. in there and we do the right thing, mm. We will get over what, 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 what would this mean for the young person who um, is looking forward to uh, having a job, um, having their lives back, you know, at full throttle? What would this mean for them? Um, will it mean some more hardship, a freeze on employment? We, we've been there before. We, this all happened. We've been there. And now we have the opportunity to negotiate within a set of parameters that we develop ourselves of course, with the funds approval. Mm -hmm. So you can buffer 
for the essentials become prioritized. So it's a question of negotiating and prioritizing. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is not going to be automatic that our program will be the same as that that the NDC underwent. Because again, like I'm saying, the conditions mm -hmm. and the systems that underpin those conditions are different. During the NDC's era, it was internal. It was specific to Ghana. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we had the oil resources, we had all the things we had at that time mm -hmm. not impacted by major... They, they argue that there was a global meltdown within the financial space. Agreed. So the, there was a pandemic. The Ghanaian economy is indelibly tied into the global system That's right. at the wrong end of the stick. But, but, a crisis that stops all supply chains, like COVID, mm. worldwide, cannot be equated to what they experienced with that meltdown at that time. When the entire world comes to a stop, mm. there's no production whatsoever for several months. And then starting after that, it's then halted barely a year later by another major supply chain disruptor, which is war. Mm. War destroys everything, literally. And then the war in, in Russia and Ukraine, like it or not, is impacting the international financial system, mm. it's impacting international food supplies, it's impacting international fuel supplies. So all that it means is that when the world, after the major, unless you want to pretend that COVID was not major, mm. unless you want to pretend that COVID was not something unprecedented, since perhaps the meltdown of the Second World War, mm. uh, the stock exchange crash, uh, or some even take it way back to the influenza uh, crisis of mm. 1911. Right. If you admit that, then you know that where we have been mm. is way beyond but, but, but individual countries. As of, countries why be, why so, be, as so, of 2019, so, your debt to GDP was 62.69. So you were already not doing so well in 2019. Yes, 62.69. Yes. Could we have held it? You can't, or could you have brought it down? You, you can't presuppose that back of it, we're going to crash. You can't. I've heard those arguments before that we're already going down. 62.69. If, oh, if we're in we a had, bad place already. If we had stayed at 62.69, mm. would we be at 79 now or 72? Mm. We wouldn't we be. We have crossed the 80% mark. That's what the IMF says, or mm -hmm. that's what the World Bank says. I think those figures will all be put out mm -hmm. when they do the objective assessment right. that they are coming to do. Right. But the important thing is that there was a major intervening factor that nobody can run away from. Mm -hmm. Equalization has had its day. <laughs> we will equalize, but this is the apex of equalization. Is it this been time, to IMF. time to equalize? Uh, it, it, we have to move. That's what I'm saying. We, we, equalization has had its day mm. because there can't be anything bigger than we going to IMF and then this also went to IMF. Mm. And we say we didn't go and we have gone. So it's over. Now it's objectivity. And objectively, we had an economy that was resilient enough post-COVID and was bouncing back, projected beyond five percent mm. and it was not our projection it was a projection from the world bank so we had the fundamentals right but the difficulty mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. we are so tied into this international import thing right. that we bring in all the imported inflation mm -hmm. and we bring in all the external troubles at once mm -hmm. look at our ties to ukraine and russia mm -hmm. wheat uh, iron rods uh, uh, what do you call the other one Fertilizer. Uh, fertilizer. Mm. Buying even the oil. We also get oil. But wheat, iron, rose, fertilizer. So it's food, construction. It's everything. So it impacts us heavily at once. But, but the, um, your, why did your government promise one district, one factory, one village, one dam, planting for food and jobs? And some of these things were supposed to address the things you're mentioning. Johnny, Johnny. How is it that we have pumped money into all these things? Six Johnny. years on, we're still making references to, to, to these things. Johnny, mm. this morning, I was contemplating. In fact, since we made the announcement, I've been contemplating what really is the situation of our political system. I think two things have to be addressed, and this is the opportunity to do so. Mm. The polarization and the fragility of the economy. What? The polarization is such that 
government policy, government programs have a short life, shelf life. Mm. And many programs have a need for longer shelf life than we offer them. Mm. When a government changes <clears throat> in Ghana, everything pre is demonized and dumped. And then you build a new foundation, you start afresh. Mm. And within eight years, you don't have enough policy time, policy space to entrench everything. 1D1F, what we are aiming at is, is to establish a strong agro-industrial complex in this country, which is our 40. That's our most competitive mm. age. <clears throat> we have the land. We have the people on the land. We can do organic farming. And, and if we do and process, we can sell, we can export. We can also get some to eat. Mm. Food security, but six years which we on, don't have. Six years on was the six story. Years on, We're still importing food. Our because, food inflation is be, high. Because we don't have, we haven't had enough time for all the policies to begin to Six, back. six years? We have 108 factories mm. working now, mm. okay? And what has been we the aim. impact? Yeah. For example, the 43 items on the benchmark value mm. list, mm -hmm. how many of them do we produce in this country? Yeah, but that's the, what the agro-industrial objective of this country, Ghana Beyond Aid, aims at. And I'm saying you need more policy space than six years to really make a dent. Because people how, how many are years? important. How many years? Hmm? How many years? Oh, I think that is why we are talking about breaking the aid. You need to go beyond that cycle where every eight years you, you still you are, have you are doubting hope fires. that you will break the We eight. will. You will? I'm telling How you. How will you do that? Because fundamentally, the Ghanaian who votes knows the difference between the quality of governance we offer and that of our what you, whatever you, you Whatever you criticized and, mm. and demonized mm. is what you're repeating. It perhaps Look, even worse. No, it's not. That's what I'm you saying. You spoke that about exchange rates. You spoke about fuel prices. You spoke about cost of living. You spoke about inflation, GDP. You bastardized IMF. You spoke everything you spoke about. You have done worse. We haven't done worse. Johnny, we are transforming this economy. And we need policy space and policy time to do so. Okay. And Let we will do it. Mm. We will go beyond the eight years because what we have already planted mm. is bearing fruit. Let, let, me, let me ask you this final one. I'll come to you, okay. Council. Sorry about that. Um, so... The IMF will be in, in the country on Wednesday. That's what I understand. This letter was released, uh, the, the press release came out last Friday. Mm -hmm. At what time did we, because the IMF will come and they will start looking at our programs, homegrown and all of that. How, how, how long ago did we put this program together for the IMF to come and take a look at? No, we, the IMF is here with us. Don't assume that they don't know who yes. we are and what we do. I, are we here. are members of the IMF, I get it. And we have an Article 4 consultation. Right. Mm the relationship with them. And they have a country director right. in Ghana. So they are on top of their indices. They are on top of our programs, which put, we put in our budget. Uh, you remember we established care, mm. the care program, uh, the poverty care. alleviation uh, program, mm. to deal with the main immediate direct impacts of mm. COVID. Mm. After that, we put in Obatamba, which was an enhancement of the previous cares, mm. to give us a longer term structural change but, process. But, but I'm saying mm -hmm. that this one, what we're going to do, mm -hmm. if IMF is coming, it only means that a big, a big brother is coming to look over your shoulders and look at your books. Oh, no. yeah. now, now, so this homegrown programs that they are going to look I, at, I how long ago I, did we no, put Johnny, it together? We don't have, I don't think, mm -hmm. I'm not privy to your information, but I'll hazard that we don't have the program on the table for them to look at. You yet. don't? No. Okay. They will have to engage us on an initial assessment mm. and framework. Uh, what we need mm -hmm. now is balance of payment support. Okay. Uh, in other words, the interest overhang on our short-term maturing debts. Mm. Something has to be done about that in view of the drastic revenue shortfalls. Okay. So, so <clears throat> we are coming in here. We are coming to test mm. what we have what we propose, but you will not have a framework until you have an initial discussion. I hear you. So I believe that mm. on Wednesday, we will have a good discussion mm. and then we'll take off from there. Thank you. Council, your senior at the bar says that there's nothing to apologize for uh, and that admission is enough. What do you say? Initial comment. Okay, so Johnny, once again, good morning. And before I start, um, I have some colleagues at the law school
mm. who today are taking their part two exams. Mm. Let me just you know, wish we them. usually charge for these things. Absolutely. I just want to wish <laughs> them good luck. <laughs> Many years ago, I was in their shoes, and I believe that they can come out of it. Right. You see, Johnny, this morning, I was expecting... Oh, you have their names, or...? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, no. okay. This morning, I was expecting uh, my learned senior, the director of communications of the MPP, mm. to look mm. the good people of Ghana in their face and with humility apologize for the pervasive deception, mm -hmm. the groundstanding, the recklessness, the pervasive corruption mm -hmm. that has become the name of this Akufuado Baumia Keno Foriata administration. Regrettably, he had decided, instead of apologizing for the abysmal performance as a gap that today had brought all of us on our knees. He had rather decided to engage in ground standing. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly the reason why mm -hmm. we are where we are today. And I will explain why. Explain. In the 2022 budget statement alone, this government projected that they were going to pay interest payment and amortization alone in excess of 45 billion Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. Salaries and emoluments, another 33 billion. Statutory payment, 26 billion. So if you put just three line items, no capital expenditure, just three line items, we are almost getting to 100 billion. Now, if you have an economy where you are paying 45 billion mm. on interest payment and amortization, mm -hmm. you have very little space left to do the growth propelling activities, the things that you need to do to mm. propel economic growth. Now, if you recall, in 2014, 2015, Baumia used to have these lectures right. at Central University. Right. Serious. I'm surprised right. that today he's unable to do that. In one of the lectures with the anchor hold mm. as Ghana runs to the IMF, Baumia said this, quote, Dr. Baumia. Mm. Baumia. Dr. Baumia. Dr. Baumia, Thank sorry. You. Oh, yes, Dr. Mm. Dr. <laughs> oh, doc. Very well. Dr. Baumia, very well. <laughs> Dr. Baumia make the point that for the NDC to be spending 10 billion Ghana cities, now catch the numbers, mm. 10 billion Ghana cities on interest payment and amortization, it was a mark of incompetent management of the economy. Today, under Baumia, as the chairman of the economic management team, mm. this year alone, we are going to do in excess of 45 billion. In fact, it is projected to be 50 billion Ghana cities on interest payment. So you move it mm. from 10 billion to 50 billion in the space of five years. Time value of money. That's exactly where I am coming to. Mm. Now, the bigger point of this problem is about the exchange rate. Because remember that we are paying our, you know, external debt in dollar terms or whether pounds or whatever. Mm -hmm. So once you stabilize the exchange rate, what it does is that it impacts on how much you pay. Mm -hmm. Do you know that from January to this day, the depreciation of the city alone had added 30 billion to our public debt? Now, who do you blame? for the mismanagement of the exchange rate. Obviously, the economic management team led by Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, nothing else, nothing more. And so, when your incompetence results in this country going back to the IMF, and, and, and let me make the point. In 2015, when Ghana signed up, you know, signed up to the IMF program, Poland went to the IMF, mm. Kenya went to the IMF, Morocco went to the IMF. Even Ukraine went to the IMF. But, Baumia and I recall... But, on but, the but, but, sorry, but YB, for example, is suggesting that we induce our, so, 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 our crisis so, so, so I am coming locally. There. I am coming there. On the 10th day of May 2015, this is what Baumia said. Baumia condemns NDC for going to the IMF. And the reason why he condemned the NDC where that he, according to him, were going to the IMF because of mismanagement. Today, this country and this administration, led by Mr. Akufuado, they have gotten in excess of 500 billion Ghana cities 
total revenue from taxes, grants, loans, 500 billion Ghana cities. Now catch this. In eight years, mm. Mills and Misata Mahama administration had only 247 billion Ghana cities. In eight years, just in five years, this administration had gotten in excess of five, 500 and, and, billion. And you cannot see the factories. You cannot see children are in school. You cannot see the. Now, dams. Catch, you, see, I, you see, I prefer the data driven conversation. Right. As we speak, one of the flagship programs this administration touts itself is free SHS. That's right. The overall cost of free SHS is just 7.2 billion. So take 7.2 billion from 500 billion. How much is left? The overall cost of all the social intervention program by the Akufado administration per the 2022 budget statement is only 42 billion Ghana cities. All planting for food and jobs. If you recall, mm. the NDC administration had negotiated what became known as MAPO mm -hmm. with the Canadian authorities. Unfortunately, there was a change in government in Canada. So Justin Trudeau's government came in, and what they did was that by the time MPP came, the disbursement of the funds from MAPO had come. So they changed the name from MAPO to Planting for Food and Jobs. They got over 100 million Canadian dollars. So that provided them the seed money to roll out the Planting for Food and Jobs, which was actually MAPO under NDC and the tenant. Today, as I speak to you, mm -hmm. do you know that after they finished spending the Canadian money, they have failed to pay as we speak, they owe fertilizer suppliers 485 million Ghana cities. Because? They don't have money. As we speak, the seed, the people who provided the seed for the Planting for Food and Job program, they owe them 205 million Ghana cities. So as we speak today, this government had run the economy of Ghana into the dish. Russia, Ukraine, COVID means nothing to you. You see, any time Because this, it's reality. I want to reference the words by Dr. Baumia. Mm. He said, look, how come that the NDC administration were talking about external, you know, pressures or shocks mm. in 2015? What are the shocks done to Ivory Coast? Mm. What has it done to the others? First of all, we woke up one morning to see commodity prices falling. In fact, Setekwe had gone to parliament mm -hmm. and had projected that crude oil prices were going to be in the region of $65 per barrel. Because we are an oil producing country, mm -hmm. we expected to make money once we you know, sell our crude oil. Mm -hmm. Within a month, crude oil prices fell from $65 to $30 over $40 reduction. That is what you call external shock. Not at that time, not at, please, <laughs> at that time, <laughs> our friends in the MPP said, we had no basis to say that external shocks were the reason for the IMF engagement. They condemned it. And that is what resulted in Baumia. I saw you play during Johnny's mm -hmm. Bike, where he makes the point that how come that you know, uh, 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 uh. we are talking about external factors when there is Ivory Coast. Let me ask you a simple question. I'm here to ask the question. No, no, no. I, I, I it's, understand. It's a rhetorical question. The point yeah. I want to make is that as I speak to you, the mismanagement of the economy mm -hmm. of a government that has gotten over 500 billion Ghana cities mm -hmm. in taxes, grants, and loans, but has very little to show for. Is the reason why today we are where we are. But, 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 but don't you also factor in the fact that salaries, emoluments, and, and all those you know, demands that have been made on, on the public purse by Nagrat is making, Teu, all of them. You see, you are no, talking, no, no, you why, are why talking you? about. No, you see, I am telling you how much they have spent. Mm. I'm not telling you about the future. No, I'm, I'm also... I'm so, also Margaret asking, and co uh, are now making yeah, a demand. But, but salaries, have been paid? salaries have been paid. No, have they been paid? Salaries have been paid you in see, the past. You see, Johnny, you know mm. why it is difficult mm -hmm. to provide excuses for this government? Why? You cannot tell me that there are demands from Nagrat, Tim, organized labor, when you have 199 to spend on a cathedral, 
You cannot. It is difficult to, you know, to justify. You are saying that organized labor is putting pressure on government. Then you have 199 million mm -hmm. and you've given it to a cathedral project. Are you prudent? Are you wise? It's like a man who wakes up in the morning. The children say, we have our school fees to pay. There is no food at home. Then this man picks money from the house and says, look, I am going to build a cathedral. Not because he lacks a church building. Because he has a church that he attends. Mm -hmm. There's a church building. But he has left his children who are hungry at home to go and give seed money for a cathedral. That's certainly not a wise okay. man. But you see, let me tell you something. Wrap up on this one. Do you know why at this point mm. the Akufado Baumia Kenoforiata administration had no other option than in a disgraceful manner approach the IMF? 2022, first mm. quarter, this government projected that total revenue they were going to get would mm. be 14 billion Ghana cities. Right. They only made 12 billion. Because people like you no, uh, no, no, got I'm people coming. not I'm to coming. pay the I'm, E-Levy. I'm, I'm coming. Mm. They only made 12 billion. Mm. Now, out of that 12 billion, our interest and emolument commitment or liabilities for the first quarter is 13.3, no, sorry, 13.8 billion. So what it meant was that all the revenue this administration got in the first quarter could not even service our debts. They only made 12 out of 14, and the liabilities were 13 billion. So, so, we run a deficit. so for the first quarter, mm. another shock, and, and the economy is in a panic situation. Do you know that they had to borrow to even pay salaries for the first quarter? Because even the revenue they obtained could not even pay our liabilities. And you know the how do you How do you marry, marry the two? When YB, for example, say that the economy is not as bad and as weak as you ah, describe it. No, 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 I'm giving how, you. How do you marry no, he the doesn't two? even understand what is going on. Oh, how? Yes, I'm telling you. I'm telling you that first quarter projected <laughs> revenue. Oh, no, I mean, I would defer superior finish. knowledge in the law to him. Look, like I told you, this year, first quarter, the projected total revenue was 14. Mm -hmm. They ended up getting 12 billion. Interest payment alone took 13 billion out of the amount. Mm -hmm. So do you know that they had to even borrow in order to pay some of the interest? Because the issue with our interest and debt obligation is that if you don't pay, the Paris Club of Lenders will blacklist you for sometimes five years. And so to avoid it, they have to go borrow to top up the 13 billion, and now okay. federal borrow okay. to do. But, or oh, just a few oh, no, days, so okay. that I'll just, I, I, no, I, there's I, something more precarious so that I can <laughs> just go, so that my senior will come in. Do you know that in 2021, mm. this administration got 1.2 billion as NHIS fund? Mm. That's from the levy. Mm. Can Oforiata release only 127 million out of 1.2 billion? And where's the rest? Key question to ask. I don't know whether my learned senior this morning has answers why even statutory funds mm -hmm. that by law are supposed to be released to the NHIA within 30 days, Kenno Foriata had decided. And that is why H.E. John Ramani Mahama is saying that. Look, the man who has taken this administration, this country, to this law should not be the one helping us out. Because but if he got us in there, he would know how to get us out there. He doesn't. Or how? Look, I If you walk so, your way into a room, maybe, wouldn't you maybe, know how to walk yourself do, out do, of do, the room? Do you yes, know what? Do you know what? He will come. 30 seconds. Do you know something? Hmm. Our finance minister believed that the only way of economic solution is mm -hmm. borrowing. So in, in the space of five years, Ken Oforiata, as the, uh, the, the, the finance minister of this republic, had borrowed... $13.8 billion of euro bonds alone. Euro bonds alone. And each time that he borrows euro bonds, his own bank data okay. bank 
profit from it. And as I speak to you, okay. they have made Thank over you. 158 Thank million. You. Thank you. No, 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 no. Thank no. you. The, the, Thank the, you. The, no, no, no. Thank no, no. I'm Thank giving you the numbers. Thank you. Thank you. No, Johnny, so, the reason so why I'm saying this is that. I cannot independently verify No, no, no. Name. Oh, he went to parliament and gave this mm. number. Mm. That so far, Data Bank had made 158 million. Okay. From both each one. Uh, yeah, Bobby Asamo is a private legal practitioner. Is also the uh, National Communications Director of the New Patriotic Party and lawyer Godwin Eduji Tamakula, private legal practitioner, also a member of the NDC's legal team and a member of the National Communications team. Welcome back, gentlemen. Webby, so Eduji had made uh, some claims. You want to quickly respond to some and then Johnny, we'll go on to. Eduji's biggest claim is a claim to what Baumia said mm. and didn't say. It's about, should I use the word embarrassment? Mm. The embarrassment that we had a certain position, right. and now uh, that position we've been compelled to change. Mm -hmm. And that is his main situation. Mm. So the language, uh, deception, incompetence, they all, this is all language designed to hit as hard as uh, uh, he can at, at the about 10 or vote mm -hmm. phase or whatever mm -hmm. you call it. But this is policy. This is about people's lives. Mm. And so, like I said, the declaration that we are going to IMF is enough admission of our intent as a government to do the best. Could we have people. avoided it if we had listened? Do, uh, Professor Lord Mensah, for example, of the University of Ghana Business School, warned in 2019. But you see, I'm not sure he's the only one. You see, <laughs> the argument uh, uh, before you jumped in with that question, right. okay. I was going to finish with Eduji. Sorry, I was just uh, uh -huh. asking that Be one. Because, yes, the other but, persons... Mind the mic for me. Uh, the the other watch. persons, uh -huh. including uh, Professor, you. all those who spoke, mm. But in particular, when you listen to the NDC, they simply refuse to accept the real death of COVID and the war. When it comes to Ghana, they turn a deaf ear, they shut their eyes to that impact. And I'm glad you asked that question because it's real. It is genuinely real. Mm. It is the bottom. It is at the heart of where we are now. It is real. If, but for those factors, which we can't never determine because they happened, if they hadn't happened, mm -hmm. you could have then uh, uh, engaged in that banter at the same level. But the NDC knows and refers in public to pretend, have amnesia when it comes to public discourse about the real impasse. So they will go back to what Baumia said. They will go back to what the president said. They will go back to what YB said. They will go back to what MPP senior people said. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't deal with the fundamental issue. And that is what I want to re-emphasize. Mm. That indeed, where we are, we had an economy that was bouncy enough and was going along. We've doubled the GDP of this country. We've doubled the size of the mm. economy. We have. In this period, we have. So we have invested money in this economy. <clears throat> the debt overhang is not only all borrowing. It is also includes a substantial part, which is interest on interest. And they don't tell the public that. Mm. When they mention the figure in this large way, they create the impression that all that money is money that has been borrowed and misused because then they'll tag on. We don't see anything. Meanwhile, he's going to courts which have been refurbished. We are building in excess of 100 courts around the country. He knows. He understands. He knows. Mm. So, 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 will you admit, NDC, that almost between 25 to 30% of that debt is interest upon interest? Mm. Even between 2021, December 2021, up to March 2022, we lost almost 41 billion in, in, in value, mm. which came to top up the debt. You, you understand? Mm. Because the debt grows to a point where your inability to service it rapidly means it grows ever faster as your city depreciates. But you told us that you are not going to borrow, that we're going to toll the... the the roads we and told make you, all the money. And we told you we were going to borrow responsibly. No, Dr. Babuya said you don't. You we don't told need, you, Dr. Babuya said you, do, you don't need to borrow. We just need to tow the roads and make all the money. He said we'll borrow responsibly. No, he said he said you you he said yeah. you were not going to and borrow. You, your recollection is different from mine. I think <laughs> we, we're borrowing responsibly. No government mm. in the world doesn't borrow. Mm. Even the U.S. Fed borrows from itself. Mm. They print money. <laughs> they print money. Mm. You understand? Advanced economies don't. Uh, uh, they have their own transparency levels. They print money. It's borrowing. Mm. Uh, uh, over the period since 
COVID, uh, past three, four years, mm -hmm. uh, pre-COVID and within COVID, right. they've printed in excess of 17 trillion. If you add all the economies together and their debt position in that period mm -hmm. to, to, to aid their economies, you, you understand? So, so it is not bad to borrow, but you have to borrow in a way that you can sustain. And we are saying that COVID was such a shock that we had to invest in running the country even when there was no production. Mm -hmm. So we are compelled to borrow to run the country mm -hmm. when supply chains had stopped. People had to be taken care of. Their health had to be taken care of. Public health had to grow in spite of a lack of revenue. But, but in our case, mm -hmm. we were only on a partial lockdown in Accra, Kumasi, Tema, and Kaswa for three weeks. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just And the rest, we got back and we were working. It wasn't just about lockdown. Mm -hmm. Go back and see the number of people we recruited into the front line, the number of facilities we put up for testing, the num you know, the other things we did, which made us contain that. Pandemic, and they're still including, complaining that they have not been paid, largely. Hmm? Those people are complaining, some who are promised that they will have 50% insurance and all of that, the beautiful for thing, which we borrow. The beautiful thing about where we are <clears throat> is that, I, that's why I don't want to contest his figures, he's throwing so many figures about. Mm -hmm. The beautiful thing is that the IMF is coming in here and we'll all be privy to the financial figures. Okay. Uh, where there is debt, where there is uh, salaries unpaid, whatever it is. We will have the final figures on which the Mind program the will be designed. We will have the final uh -huh. figures on which the program will be designed. But I want to go back and say that it is not enough mm. for the NDC to repeat our words to us. Why? Not. Because it doesn't justify their approach to the IMF. That is what they are trying to do. They are trying to say that because we say those things about them and we are now with the IMF, it means that they were right. They were not right. But your own party member, Kennedy, Japan said, we have, you have failed. Any country that goes to the IMF means that you have failed. He's an individual within the party. He doesn't represent policy for the He's party. He's a strong voice in your party. His voice will be evaluated and weighed by people within the party and outside the party. The party is behind the government. I started by saying that there may be people with private opinions mm. about how to go about this. But in the wisdom of the president... He believes that this is the way to go. Is the country and the new the right patriotic way? party, mm -hmm. irrespective of individual private opinions, is solidly behind that decision. <clears throat> because we believe that once the governing party, who are in charge mm -hmm. and who engage on these matters, think that this is the time to do this, mm -hmm. in order to recover even faster and better, mm -hmm. then they deserve all the support we can give them. Mm -hmm. Because it's balance of payments. I mean, let's not quibble over this. Where we are, mm. we are simply sorry, in the wake. Oh, this yeah. uh, thing. Sorry. Yeah. Where we are, no, it's okay. Mm. Uh, we're on the program. Mm. Where we are, we are in a situation where, like it or not, our revenues are too weak. Could, could we to have support? avoided going this route? And I mentioned Professor Lord Mensah. Yeah. He advised. Um, I know other economists who have advised. Did, we tried. Did we listen? Yeah, we did. We tried. We tried to improve revenue. Mm. We tried to cut expenditure. We put in a raft of measures. Mm. You know, we cut down on government expenditure, salaries. We cut down uh, spending from government departments mm. and agencies up to about 30%. That was and, just and, last and, year. And, yeah, but this don't, year. Forget, don't forget that also has a knock-on effect on growth. It can also contract growth because government is the biggest spender in our economy. So those cuts, you also have to assess very carefully. But then we did that. We also looked at tightening the fiscal space, mm -hmm. you know, and then we tried to ramp up revenue. We tried to ramp up revenue and then we introduced the E-Levy. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. like I said earlier on, this uh, polarization meant that we couldn't, we couldn't mm -hmm. achieve our revenue target. In fact, we could even pass our revenue measure. And mm -hmm. that is what precipitated the current situation. Right. Because the international community uh, are investors in our mm -hmm. bonds, mm -hmm. in our debt. Our debt is part is held internationally and part is held locally. So they will look at your projections. Mm -hmm. They will look at your budget projections. Mm -hmm. They looked at our budget projections. Like Edward G was saying, and we expected a certain sum of money mm -hmm. from a certain revenue flow, which was the E-Levy right. that we were proposing. Right. Now we go into Parliament and we have the old frame 
Mm. The numbers have changed, but the style of doing politics is the same. Mm. So the NDC insisted on opposing it at all costs. And, and, and did, did we find a middle ground? Because if you look at the posture of government, we will pass it and they cannot do anything no, about it. We if you look at the posture of government. We negotiated. Time, but going forward. The, the, the negotiation, for example, mm. if you look at the town hall meetings that happened mm. after the e levy had been forced in parliament, it, the implementation hit a snag. So, so let me look at it. We're looking way. at 600 million for a month. And so, then so, now we're getting 60 million. So, so let me look at it this way. Let me look the at it. People this are way. sending you a signal. Yeah, don't no, let me look at it this way. If we had had the numbers, it's an if we had had the numbers, right. that wouldn't have happened. Right. It would have passed. Mm -hmm. It would have been implemented in all its glory. Because we didn't have the numbers, we had to step back and negotiate with the NDC and drop some important handles. We negotiated mm -hmm. with them. It was in the mm -hmm. town hall meetings. Mm -hmm. It was in parliament. It was privately, finance ministry. They know. I can't expose all that right. here. But the fact of the matter is that we had to modify the e levy mm -hmm. to the extent that where we're going to make the most money, we had to cut down because of that. Okay. But even and beginning then, with that, the then, people of Ghana yes, flatly have rejected because, the E-Levy because, because the, the inflows way, are not coming in. Because of the way it was projected, because of the way it was projected, uh, uh, people advised themselves. You, heard, you said it yourself, mm. that people like you, you told mm. the <laughs> people like you are the ones who didn't make the thing <laughs> succeed. You understand? In the five months that we were haggling and running around the country discussing it, mm. a lot of people assumed the wrong end of the stick and decided that it was the worst evil they could face from the rhetoric and therefore took other. But, but for that, example, for but example. That, but that also no, no, means me, that people have example, lost interest no, for example, and support for the government. For example, for example, mm. a recent report says that bank flow turnover has shot up by 250 million, mm -hmm. a billion, since E -Levy, e levy started. That's right. It's a significant statistic. Mm. It means that uh, uh, the banks, it's a commercial market. The banks have cashed in on the disaffection that was created mm. towards E levy. And they have taken a significant chunk of the market. And that market is not taxed. But E levy, e -Levy would have, correct, that, that's the point. <laughs> so E levy would have given you, um, you know, money from the telco side. There, there are other revenue gi measures. Giving you, for example, corporate, corporate tax, mm. 25%. Mm. Uh, you would have gotten some more money because you'd be getting from the consumers or the transactions. You'd be getting from the telcos itself and many other handles. We projected six billion. Right. Per annum. Now that it's was a now fair it's amount of money. Mm. That was a really good amount of money for our purpose at that time. Mm. Because other revenues come in. And those other revenues would have anchored, the e would have anchored those other revenues. Mm -hmm. And we could have pushed ourselves into a better place than mm -hmm. we are now. You understand? We would have met our immediate short-term loans. We could have carried on. Mm. We, are, we are talking about why we, we went to the IMF right. this late. And right. I'm saying that we were in position to engage effectively on meeting the expectations of our investors, mm. international investors in our debt, mm. local and mm. international, mm. except that given the numbers in parliament, given the bruha that went on, the anchor for our ex revenue expectations, mm. which was the E-Levy, uh, dissolved. Well, it said warned you. They told you it's a regressive, yeah. retrogressive tax. You see, the money we had projected, I want to focus on the expected revenue. Right. The money we had projected, and I'll go back to it. If we had had the parliament of old, mm. the seventh parliament, the sixth parliament, mm. whether mm. it was the NDC or MPP, that measure would have passed. This is the first time we have a parliament where government business can be stalled even sometimes by blackmail. The currently, government is expecting to pick up support of $1 billion, which mm. has to pass through parliament. And the minority says, no, we will, up front, without even debating the merits of it, they said we will pass it. Because the Unless this, that, 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 that. Because the Speaker of Parliament says you are starving parliament. Hey, so. But that's the point I'm making. How can the Speaker of Parliament be hosting of the government, on a government measure, on an executive measure that is intended for the benefit of the entire Because country. you're seeing the executive is spending and, and they are not getting anything to spend. Is that the basis for stopping? That's why I'm saying that in a sense, I don't want to use the word blackmail, but I have already mentioned it. You, you are trading, <laughs> <laughs> you are trading on the wrong premise. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? If the numbers were otherwise, 
if the numbers were different, mm. this kind of horse trading. But, but then happen. the people would have still demonstrated as they are doing now, because if they decide not to transact, yeah, business, it, would have, it would have been a different kettle of fish. Mm. It would have been a different kettle of fish. The the poison. Mm. Let's admit it, and, and Johnny, you know it. Mm. There was so much poison in that period of five months before we were able to pass public confidence. Even the passing public confidence, of it, public confidence in the in the government, yeah, even the no, no, had dwindled. About, you can't, People no, you say, can't. look, you collect the money, they don't know what you use it for. They can't see it. They can't feel it. The more you collect, the more hardship they feel. And, and you're not doing you see, what it is that you need to do to see, make their lives easier. You see, Johnny, these were arguments that were made pre-2020. Mm -hmm. Yet, we had a rousing endorsement in the mm -hmm. president. Mm -hmm. You understand? People on the ground feel the things we are doing. They see them. They do? They do. They do. I, it's, it's, you know, look, for example, for example, mm. Terminal 3. Terminal 3. When we came into authority, essentially, talking about Terminal 3 reminds me, let me tell you, Zujida, it was Ufriata who brought us out of his government's IMF program. <laughs> I almost forgot to, with the to remind you. With the KNK party. <laughs> no, the, 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 yeah, the KNK party, where right. we, we, the IMF certified us. Mm. His government, IMF program. It was Tufreta who brought them out. Yes, so we are back we, again. Yeah, so let's move on to the other one I was saying. That Terminal 3. When we came into authority, it was less than 30% complete. It had all the hoardings around it. MAPA was on site. They were building. Okay? If we had not continued it, it wouldn't be there. Okay? So it's there. It's testament to what we did. It is testament to what we did. It's one of many examples. You go to the railway sector. The lines we are building through in Pakadai into the Eastern, mm -hmm. they are there. And it costs money. The Eastern Corridor. We have relayed it, asphalt. It is there. Go there now and see what we have done. It is mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. People feel it. You understand? There are individuals who know and feel. In my own constituency. Many, many places where they never dreamt they would see quota, chippings, much more asphalt. Mm. It is there now. So why is food expensive? That's the, the, the conversation people are exactly. asking that, look, going forward, we have sunk money into planting for going, food and jobs. Yeah, we, we can't find go, the food. Go, going forward. The family core is, is not is, there. Going forward, that is what we must be very, very swift about. It's one of the measures we must look at. The ability to reduce the import bill on food. Because one of our biggest priorities is food security. So where is what we planted? Oh, yes, right now. Mm -hmm. Right now. You know, we managed to go for it to the point where we're exporting food across West Africa. We were. And right now, I'm going to have a minister. He's been very engaging. There are places outside the major metropolitan areas where there is food. Mm -hmm. But evacuation to metropolitan areas costs so much. Mm -hmm. you, you understand what I'm saying? cost so much that you could be buying food in Accra very expensively and that is local staples mm -hmm. and and then find them very cheaply at farm fuel it is expensive the loaders those who park the food exactly. onto the trucks Fuel well and all those things are that's what I'm saying that when you do this analysis mm -hmm. and you don't in all objectivity accept the international reality then you are shortchanging the people of Ghana with whom you are trying the to international engage. reality includes your weak city Exactly, which is, which is part of the reason being the excessive imports. Mm -hmm. If we are importing a billion, a billion and a half dollars mm -hmm. worth of food, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not fair to ourselves. We, we have even abandoned consuming staples. Mm -hmm. There are many families, metropolitan families, third generation families in Accra and Kumasi who don't eat plantain. They only eat rice. They eat indomie. <laughs> they don't eat cassava. Mm. They don't eat cocoyam. You know? So, so, so a culture that is building up that we need to arrest mm. as a matter of national human security. Mm. But when our politics doesn't prioritize national policy mm. and, and give you policy mm. time mm. to effect two, that, two, then we have issues. Two quick things. Yes. What would this move to IMF mean? A freeze on jobs? And all of that. So NAPCO is there. Um, we, for example, stop it. This U starts with this 
yet to kick in? Will it, will it stop? What would it hopefully, mean? Hopefully not. A lot more we hardship. Can't, we can't sacrifice you, start. Definitely, there is going to be a lot more belt tightening. But the beautiful thing now about the IMF is that they don't do their one-size-fits-all approach anymore. Mm. In the 70s and 80s, <laughs> they, they simply came in and cut everything, mobilize the money and pay your bills, creating social defection and, you know, <laughs> they were not sensitive. Now, they are extremely sensitive to individual country needs. Mm. So they have country-made, that's what they call the homegrown policy. They have country-made programs tailored mm. to your needs. Mm. So if you listen to the country, uh, the, uh, the international director, what's her name? Georgieva. Mm. Uh, mm. You listen to her last time she had a press conference. She said she has a one trillion dollar war chest. And she's going to use it to help the hundred countries who have applied so far mm. for support. So, so she has an idea of what's at stake. Mm. For Ghana, our biggest problem is the debt overhang. The and, and, programs and, and, are good. Mm. So if we can get the IMF to support us mm. with loans that will help us to restructure our short-term mm -hmm. exposure mm. and make the debt long-term, mm. then what it will do is that it will reduce our interest mm. payments mm. My, 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 monthly mm. so that we can, con we can create fiscal space mm. to I, continue right. funding the programs mm. that benefit our people. Uh, finally, uh, mm. before I go to Eduji, mm. so... You took us out of IMF. Yes. After extending the program for about two years. Yeah. Then you organized a Kinky party. And now yeah. we're going back to IMF. Kinky is good. Um, with Wachi. <laughs> <laughs> Wachi is best. <laughs> now, now we're going back to the IMF. Uh -huh. Should we still keep the faces that have led us here at the ministry? Ken Oforiata, um, Charles Dubois. And in fact, let me extend it to the economic management team. A great minister, Lantre Manting, uh, Professor Jan for what a solid economic had, management team. So had, we keep them I the same purpose, faces. I had purposed not to equalize or, or otherwise, because I think this is the apex of equalization, where we are now. Mm. But I'm not equalizing, I'm just asking. You. Yes. I'm talking right. about us. Him. Okay, okay, okay let's go. Salivate, <laughs> wait, 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 suck them, suck them. Energy is salivating. He's in the position, don't mind him. <laughs> so, 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 we, we, your mama faced the same cause. We said, Tekpe and his vice president, mm. he didn't suck them. You understand? It is to be expected, because it's good political capital. It, it makes... It makes the optics for the opposition looks really good. Mm. But, but Ken Ofriata is the man who has managed this economy, managed us out of the crisis the NDC left us in. And he's taking us back. Not because he mismanaged us, but because the factors that impacted his management were entirely beyond the control of Ghana, the president, the economic management team, and everybody involved. Is he still fit for the job? Why not? He understands the problem. He has held us up. He designed the CARES program. He designed Obatampa. He has led us this far. He knows what is happening. He's engaged the fund over the years. The fund understands what's at stake. Like I said, Georgieva has spoken to the whole world. The, 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 the fund understands what Ghana needs. Who best? To continue with the fund and shape it the way it's So those making Ghana the course that they should go... They are entitled to their opinion. Would the president listen? He, the president listens to the best counsel. Mm. The president listens to his cabinet. He listens to close advisors. He listens to the public. And in all of that, the box stops with him. Why is he not speaking to us then? To oh, tell he us will. This week, this week, this week, this he week will. Yes. Okay. He After will. IMF he has come and will. gone, he will speak to us. Huh? After IMF has come and gone, he will speak to us. I, I am reliably informed mm. that he will speak this week. Okay, after IMF has come and gone. Jody, I am reliably informed <laughs> that he will speak this week. You, you know whether IMF will go or Wednesday. They are always know. here with us. They are in our, they are in our are homes you? through their country office. Edu Edu is stretching. <laughs> you, you say, Jody, I time you. You give him 20 minutes for his reply. He's in power. You're in opposition. You're in opposition. I was, I was watching, you watching you, But you see, but you see, don't mind me. I listened to my learner senior. Mm -hmm. He could not point out even one borrowing or loan acquired by the NDC administration under Jomama or Mills 
that was irresponsible. Because when you borrow one billion to build a gas infrastructure project, which today mm. had become a savings to this administration, you cannot call it irresponsible. Mm -hmm. Two, if you build to construct the rich hospital, the University of Ghana Medical Hospital, mm -hmm. you cannot call it irresponsible. If you borrow for Terminal 3, mm -hmm. you cannot call it irresponsible. Today, if you borrow over $300 million mm -hmm. for the Tema, Akosombo Railway Infrastructure Project, you cannot call it irresponsible. Well, none of the loans we borrowed are irresponsible. So, Name one that please, is please, 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 please. How bad? The problem is that mm -hmm. in 2020, mm -hmm. Because Akufado wanted to win an election at all costs. It is not true. Now, would you listen? Please, please, I allow. Because he wanted to win an election at all costs, mm. okay? Mm. They forced the Electoral Commission against sound advice to create a tailor made voters register for Akufuado. Oh, how do you say that? No, 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 I'm coming. This is independent. I'm, 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 I'm coming. I'm coming. How do you make a tailor made? Oh, no. we, we printed oh, pumps. Yeah, YB, YB. We, 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 we but, 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 sorry, YB. But, 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 that's not fair to the Electoral Commission. And they are not here to defend themselves. I mean, the Electoral Commission is independent. We went through the process together. See, Stay I'll, demo I'll ball, demonstrate yeah. to you. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the Electoral Commission depends on donors for its activity. Right. In 2020, mm -hmm. the donor community indicated to the Electoral Commission that, listen, you have a voter's register that the president-elect mm -hmm. says that got him over one million votes. <laughs> now, suddenly, suddenly, the, that president now comes and says that which, the register that culminated that? in his which election that? was no longer. Which so, for the that? first time. Which donor said that? Please, oh, please. relax. I'll, I'll, I'll For the you. first time, <laughs> the Electoral Commission had to do a new register solely based on government funding. 400 million. Go and look through your budget yes, statement. Because the government paid for because, it responsibly. Because in an election year mm. that you expected government to be responsible, this government wanted, and that is why the, 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 the whipping ball, COVID-19, cannot mm. be blamed. And you know why? Why? Do you know that? Mm -hmm. Throughout the whole of West Africa, Ghana alone turned out 15.6% budget deficit for 2020 mm -hmm. because of election spending. Without more, Cote d'Ivoire didn't do 15. They didn't even do 10. They did 5.6. You take account of the... Guinea, uh, Nigeria, the none of them. System. Only Ghana did 15.6%. Mm. So they claim that COVID-19 is responsible. It's no mismanagement, corruption, and the desire to win the 2020 but, but, election. But, but, but COVID see, cannot be ruled out, right, No, Can you, we see, not? you see, I am saying that Ivory Coast had COVID. Mm. Togo had COVID. How come that they didn't turn out a budget deficit of 15%? And Ivory Coast is headed to the IMF as well. I don't know. It's not the question of heading but to the IMF. It's the question of your expenditure your during practice. election. But you see, let me even the go joint, to the more the serious issue. Uh, uh, allow him. You know, the World I, Bank country director mm -hmm. had indicated by 2019, the economy was already heading to the ditch. Correct. He said this. And government had not had the courage to see that what the World Bank country director said was wrong. But, but when the ratings were done, Moody's, Fitch, and the rest, we saw the statement from the finance ministry. They said, no, no, no. That's not what the no, situation no, no. is. But you see, you see, for investor communities, the rating agency, they deal with data. They are not emotional. Unlike this government, you can't lie to investors. They are looking at the numbers. Mm. And the numbers showed that government of Ghana was already on the road. But you see, the thing with IMF is that mm -hmm. you either walk there or you go in an ambulance. Akufuado Bamiya Keno Foriata they are in an ambulance to the IMF against sound advice. And you have pointed out, mm -hmm. Lloyd Mensah and Co. had made the point that as early as 2019, mm -hmm. that we're getting to the point of debt sustainability issues. So let's start the IMF conversation. Because what it does is that it gives you policy credibility mm -hmm. to even engage the Paris Club of Lenders. Let me just demonstrate something. If this year low, mm -hmm. you are doing 45 billion on interest payment, and the Paris Club of Lenders even agree that they will even take 2% of your interest payment, that alone can give you about 6 billion Ghana cities. You can use it to pay fertilizers, suppliers, mm -hmm. seed suppliers, pay for NHIS. 
It's simple. Is that not what the E-Levy was supposed to achieve? Six point no. nine billion. You see, that was our projection, right? Listen, listen. You see, consumers <laughs> innovate, just as taxpayers, and that is why the two of us agree that in law, there's tax avoidance and tax evasion. Tax avoidance is lawful. Mm. Tax evasion is unlawful. The reason is that any rational person, consumer, would always want to be a rational person. So once you provide an alternative, the person will go for the alternative. That's why we're doing full throttle now, So, right? So you will notice okay. that. Mm. No, that is the point <clears throat> I'm making. That at the point of thinking that you can bulldoze your way through against sound advice, this is what we've got into. But the critical thing is that if you look at government expenditure pattern, mm -hmm. that is what is taking us to the IMF. It has nothing to do with uh, uh, Russia, Ukraine, or whatever. In any case, ah. in any case, oh please, in any you case, you can boldly say that to the public. Uh, 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 time is up. No, you, you can boldly say so that to the public. I, I beg you. It has nothing to do with Russia. Maybe our time is up. I beg you. No, just give me. He can boldly say that it has nothing. When your Muhammad went abroad, yeah, yeah. Please allow him. Allow him time. Allow him time, please. And hold on for me, Michael. One minute. One minute. You see, when Muhammad was leaving. He provided what you call buffers in the economy. Mm. The stabilization he fund. He left us in the arms of the when, IMF. When COVID struck, do you know financial sector. that government had to go for 1.2 billion so. Ghana cities from the stabilization fund? That is what they use for health workers. Mm. That is what they use for the hot meals. That is why they give 600 million okay. to workers, uh, you know, to small scale business. Okay. So, that so, resulted so in the NPP in Russia, regional Russia, women, uh, women vice chair mm. saying that government gave parliamentary candidate, of which he was one, maybe hundred thousand dollars. You have not denied. You so many. No, you have not denied. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We have, 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 have to go. Have we have to go. No. We, we, have to go. So we have to go. We have to go. Now, now, they, they, we are not. We, are, uh, 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 sorry. Uh, we had Felicia Tete. Sorry. Uh, why did, quickly, um, I, I need, I need to, to get a direct answer from you. Um, e levy was implemented because we said that would be the panacea for us not going to IMF. Are we going to castle the e levy? We don't think so. No, he doesn't we know will what we relax, relax for me. We will Don't not cancel. You will not cancel the illegal. No, because, because, because we need to calibrate it well and see how it will perform. But you're it's going barely, to the it's IMF. Barely, no, it's barely a month old. And going to the IMF doesn't mean that IMF is going to replace our revenue see, flows. We still when have you, to raise see, revenue. Johnny, you know where the problem is Let me make something from. very clear. Let me when make, you collateralize can, can, can you please, please, please. Can you, can you, you let me speak? Can you let me speak? Uh, you, you've, you've made okay. your case about okay. uh, candidates. Okay. We, we have to go. We, we have to go. I wanted that answer. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Happy birthday to Linda Boating of Agbuzume Task Corner. This is from your husband, Percy. Also, a happy, happy birthday to Mrs. Mabel Oku. A happy birthday to I.K. Saina. Uh, Saini in Tamale. This is from Idi Amin here at TV3. Happy birthday also to Naira Na Ade Ashi from your mom and dad, uh, Mrs. Ashi of uh, Nicole Ventures. Uh, happy birthday to Nikita Na Komle Kome. Uh, happy birthday also to Mr. Solomon Tete Okutu. Um, a happy birthday also to Kelvin, uh, Kevin Boating. Uh, happy birthday to Mrs. Yadodu, a staff of the UHAS in Ho. Uh, thank you very much indeed, all of you. And uh, later in business, uh, 4 30 p.m. and uh, 7 p.m., uh, we will tell you why we keep going back to the IMF for bail at 17 times already. This will be our 18th. Fuel prices are just up uh, by w when government said it was engaging stakeholders to appraise the impact of its mitigating uh, efforts. We'll, we'll tell you what happened, why your fuel price is not going down, but it's rather going up after we're told it will go down. IMF team is expected on Wednesday. We'll speak to key stakeholders to find out what to expect. We'll see you after the break.